Nobody likes taking blurry photos with the iPhone. And yet we all get those blurry shots from time to time. So why does that happen? What causes these blurry images? In this video, I'm gonna answer these questions for you. And I'm also gonna to explain to you how focus works and how you can set the focus yourself when you're shooting with the iPhone so that you always get perfectly sharp photos. Now, there are only three things that typically cause blurry iPhone photos. And the first thing is movement. So if your hands are shaking while you're taking the photo, then you're gonna get a blurry shot. And it's gonna be especially problematic if you're shooting in low light. Now, this might not be a problem in the middle of the day, which is when we're recording this video, but if you're shooting in low light, and if your hands aren't perfectly stable, if your iPhone is shaking, you're gonna get a blurry photo. Now, besides movement, the second reason why people tend to get blurry photos is because the lens of the iPhone isn't clean. And this might sound kind of silly, right? Of course, if the lens isn't clean, you're not gonna get a sharp image. But the problem is that these lenses get dirty all the time because your phone might be sitting in your pocket or in your handbag, perhaps, and there it's exposed to all sorts of different dirt. And when you take your phone out of the pocket, it's really important that you get in the habit of cleaning the lens immediately after. And finally, the third reason why you might get a blurry iPhone photo is if the focus is not set correctly. And that's what we're gonna talk about in the rest of this video. When you're taking an image, focus will determine which parts of that photo are gonna be sharp and which parts of that photo are gonna be blurred out. This is gonna be especially important if you're shooting an image that has both a foreground and a background. With focus, you're gonna decide, is it gonna be the foreground that's sharp or is it gonna be the background that's sharp? If you don't make that decision, the autofocus of the iPhone will make the decision for you. And if there's a problem with that decision, then you're gonna get a blurry photo. Now, I know that all of this can be a little bit confusing, so I'm gonna show you a really simple example of how focus works using our video cameras. So currently, you're looking at my face, and my face is perfectly sharp. That's because the focus of the video camera has been set on my face. Now, if I raise my hand, my hand is also gonna be perfectly sharp because my hand is just as far from the video camera as my face is. But watch what happens if I walk closer to the video camera and if we've disabled the autofocus of video camera. So as I take a couple of steps forward, you'll see that now my face is completely blurred out. That's because the focus of the video camera was set back where I was standing before. So if I now take a couple of steps back, and if I return to the same place where I was originally standing, my face is gonna be perfectly sharp again. Because with focus, we are determining how far from the camera you're gonna have the parts of the image that are perfectly sharp. So if I now go back again, you're gonna see that now my face is starting to get out of focus. It's no longer perfectly sharp. That's because I'm now too far and the focus was set to a distance that's closer to the video camera. So if I now go back to that place where we have that focus set, my face should be perfectly sharp again. But you're gonna see that all the background behind me is still blurred out. So with focus, you're determining how far from the camera you're gonna have the parts of the scene that are perfectly sharp. And the other parts of the scene that are not in focus aren't gonna be that sharp. Okay, so you now understand how focus works. But how does this apply to iPhone photography? Well, most of the times when you're taking photos with the iPhone, you're not gonna have to worry about focus at all. That's because your iPhone, just like any other camera, has autofocus. And usually that autofocus is very accurate. So it used to be less accurate in the past, and then it was more important that you always set the focus yourself. But now, for the last few years, the autofocus of the iPhone has been remarkably accurate, and most of the times you won't have to worry about the focus at all. However, focus can become a problem if a part of your image is closer to your iPhone. If your subjects are far away, let's say everything in your image is more than 10 feet or three meters away from the iPhone, you really don't have to worry about focus at all the autofocus will get it right every time. But when a part of the image is closer than 10 feet or closer than three meters from your iPhone, that's when you gotta be more careful with focus. Those are the situations when the autofocus might struggle or occasionally it might just give you a blurry image. Let me show you an example. So I've come to this park bench 
And I've come here for a reason, because here I can frame up the kind of shot where I'm going to have interesting subjects both in the foreground as well as in the background of that image. So if you look at this picture now, you're going to see that we have that building in the background and then I have all these little planks of the bench in the foreground and they're actually working as leading lines. So they lead the eye of the viewer from that foreground towards that background. So in a photo like this, when I'm holding the iPhone here, the closest part of that bench is literally within inches from the lens of my iPhone, whereas the building is pretty far away. Now, the autofocus of the iPhone tries to create the kind of image where as many things as possible are in focus. But as a result, in a scene like this, nothing is really in focus. So the building in the background is not in focus, and the closest parts of that bench are not in focus. Instead, the autofocus has chosen an average focus value, kind of something in between those two extremes. And that's why you'll see that the middle part of the bench is perfectly sharp, but the closest part of the bench or that building in the background are not in focus. So it picks an average value, but as a result, nothing is really sharp. Now, if I look at this image, another thing that I see is that all those lines that we have are pointing towards a trash can, and that's not ideal. Now, I like all those lines. They're really strong leading lines. They lead the eye of the viewer from the foreground into the background, and that's fantastic. But it's not fantastic if they lead the eye directly towards a trash can. So I'd like to fix that. And one thing I could try to do is simply place some kind of an object here in front of the trash can. And then if I take that shot again, I'm going to have a subject in the foreground and I'll still have the building in the background, but hopefully the trash can will be covered. And as I look around, I think I should be able to find a nice leaf that we could use for this purpose. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Alright, so I found that perfect leaf I was looking for. So I'm going to frame up the shot once again and I'll carefully position that leaf exactly where I want it. So I want to make sure that it looks pretty in terms of composition and I definitely want to cover that trash can. And I think right about here I can accomplish both of those goals. Alright, so now that that leaf is in the perfect position, I'm ready to take some shots. But this time, I'm not going to leave this up to chance. I'm not going to rely on that autofocus. Instead, I'm going to set the focus in myself. And I'm going to start by setting the focus on that leaf in the foreground. So how can I do that? Well, actually, it's really simple. All I have to do is simply tap my finger on that leaf. And where I tap my finger, you'll see that this square box has now appeared. And that square box indicates that the focus is now set on the leaf in the foreground. Now you'll also see that the leaf is extremely sharp, whereas the building in the background is not sharp at all. That's because the focus is set on the leaf and not on that building. So now, with the focus set on the leaf, I'm going to go ahead and press the shutter. And that photo looks absolutely amazing. You'll see that we have just a little bit of light shining on that leaf, which makes it really stand out. And we have that building in the background. We have all those strong leading lines. We've hidden that trash can, which is a good thing. And we've chosen to deliberately set the focus on the leaf, which is why it's perfectly sharp, and which is why we have this interesting photo. But now, let's see what would happen if I were to set the focus on the building in the background instead. So I'm going to simply tap my finger on that building, and you'll immediately see that the leaf is now no longer in focus, and instead that focus is set on the building in the background. So let me take a shot, and if we now look at this image, you'll see that it's completely different. It's the same composition, but the image itself is so different from what we just captured, because now the focus is set on that building in the background. That leaf in the foreground no longer stands out as much. It's not sharp, and now this image is all about that building in the background. Again, it's the same composition, but by adjusting the focus, I can take the kind of shot where that building is sharp, but the leaf in the foreground is no longer sharp. Now, as you can see, it's really easy to set the focus on the iPhone, but there is one small inconvenience. If I set the focus on the building in the background, if I then take a shot, you'll notice that as soon as I press the shutter button, a photo is taken and then the iPhone reverts back to autofocus. 
and that's not really convenient. What if I want to take multiple shots? What if I want to make sure that that focus always stays on that building in the background? Well, in that case, I need to lock the focus. Let me show you how to do that. If I want to lock the focus on that building in the background, I simply need to tap and hold my finger there for about three seconds until the letters A, E, A, F lock appear at the top of the screen. So now the focus is locked and it's not going to change anymore. I've disabled the autofocus of my iPhone and I can take as many shots as I want and the focus remains locked on that building in the background. So if you know that you're going to be taking multiple shots, then locking the focus is a great idea because that way it's not going to change as you're taking photos. But now, let me show you one more example. So here I am standing in front of these beautiful flowers and these flowers are relatively small. There are so many of them. So I'm gonna to try to frame up a shot with just a bunch of these flowers. Let's see what that looks like. Now, as I start to get closer and closer to these flowers, you're gonna see that not all of them are in focus at the same time. That's because some of them are actually closer to the camera of my iPhone than others. And there's a lesson in that because the closer your subjects are to the lens of the iPhone, the more you're gonna have difficulties with setting the focus. If your subjects are far away, let's say you're taking a photo of a cityscape and there are multiple buildings, it doesn't really matter which building you focus on because they're so far away. But these flowers are really small and they're really close to my iPhone. And the closer my subjects are to the lenses, the more difficult it becomes to set the focus. So here, towards the left-hand side of the frame, there's one flower that's clearly closer than all the other ones. So it's at the top left intersection of grid lines. And currently that flower is not in focus. What I can do is tap and hold my finger on that flower. And now I have set focus on that one flower that's closer. What's happening is that all the other flowers are now out of focus. Alternatively, I could set focus on some of those flowers that are more in the background, like these flowers right here. Now, they are perfectly sharp, but that one flower that was closer to me, that's no longer in focus. So in a scene like this, where my subjects are so close to me, I really have to make the decisions about focus myself. Otherwise, I can be pretty sure that there will be some parts of the image that are not gonna be sharp. And if I'm not making that creative decision myself, I might get a shot that's not perfect in terms of focus. Now, at this point, my focus is still locked. So you can see the letters A, E, A, F lock on the screen. And watch what happens if I try to reframe the shot. So now I framed up a shot of the building, but the building is definitely not sharp. That's because that focus is still locked on that flower that was really close to me, but the building is far away. So how do I exit this? If I wanna get out of that focus lock, I can simply tap my finger anywhere on the screen, let's say on the building, and now the focus is set on the building. If I wanna get back to full auto, I can quickly point my iPhone towards the sky, and now I'm back to full auto focus where I'm no longer selecting where the focus is gonna go. So this is how you can turn off that AEAF lock. If you don't do this, if you forget to turn it off, you will get some blurry photos. So that's something to be careful with. Okay, so now you really know how to correctly set the focus in your iPhone photos. Once again, most of the time, it's not gonna be a problem. If your scene is further away, and if nothing is too close to your iPhone, the autofocus will do a great job. So if your subjects are more than three meters or more than 10 feet away, you really don't have to worry about focus at all. The iPhone will just get it perfect every time. However, as you start to get closer to your subjects, as we did in these examples, that's when it becomes really important that you set the focus yourself. The autofocus of the iPhone will try to guess what would be a good focus for that image, but a lot of times it will guess that wrong. And ultimately you as a photographer have to make that decision because it is a creative decision. And depending on where you set that focus, you're gonna get a very different image. So whenever your subjects are really close to you, make sure you always set the focus yourself. That way you'll create the kind of image that you wanted to create and you'll be sure that it's gonna be perfectly sharp.